a warm welcome from a chilly Johannesburg to a special edition of Breeding to Win, where we'll be focusing all our attention on the Claverflay Stud online sale, which starts tomorrow the 15th of June until next Sunday the 21st of June. And to tell us more on how to purchase a horse off this online sale is Marketing and Sales Manager of Claverflay Stud, Grant Knowles. With the online Claverflay farm sale coming up this week in conjunction with Gavel House, it's great to be chatting to Grant Knowles to tell us a little bit more about how we can get involved and see these lovely horses and of course get our buyer's card. Grant, I can't believe it's upon us now this week. Yeah, absolutely. Well, the weather's playing its part because it's normally rainy and cold when we have the farm sale, but uh, this time at least you'll be able to sit in your own lounge or office or study and uh, be able to bid without freezing to death. So, although we missed the vibe and the banter, uh, Time's call for us to go online and great to have Gavel House come on board with us. And I've got to say, we've had a lot more uh, compliments and uh, really nice comments coming through about taking this initiative and going in. And also a big thank you to the other farms that came on board. We've got Highlands, obviously Highlands, Ridgemont on, Main Chance on, Tina Inder on, and uh, a whole bunch of other guys, Beaumont, Ascot, uh, Aaron Stud. So we've got some nice support from the other farms as well. And judging on how the Bloodstock South Africa online sale close today, uh, fairly optimistic. There's, um, there's definitely still some life out there. Yeah, well, I've had some great vibe from trainers and people that have been out to see the horses and then they love the concept of the whole online sale. The catalogue looks very strong. It's a good catalogue. We've got the hard copy catalogue, but also you can get the catalogue online. Yeah, well, let's start with that because um, the catalogue will be both on the claverflay.co.za website and will also be on gavelhouse.com. And on Monday, all the videos in terms of the horses that have been filmed. So you'll be able to see still shots of the horses. You'll be able to see them walking from a side angle back to front and uh, you'll get every angle that you need need so that'll all go online on Monday um, basically now it's a matter of everybody just registering and uh, it's going to be very easy for them we've sent out buyers card applications there's availability of those on the site you can get it on turf talk and once you've filled in your buyers card application Gavel House will come back to you they'll give you a username and a password and then you're free to participate in the online bidding so actually very excited about it and Obviously, we've said that the sale starts from the 15th to the 21st of June, but I think we must reiterate, the sale's actually on Sunday the 21st. All the preliminaries from the 15th to the 21st are just getting the sale going and uh, getting people access to go online, look at the videos, and if they want to have a little first nibble. But the sale starts in earnest at 6 o'clock on Sunday the 21st. And from that moment on, we'll have every single horse coming in in order. So lot one will come in, we'll sell, there'll be a 30 second delay with a countdown, next horse will come in. So everybody gives the chance, that 30 second delay also gives the system a time just to catch up with any delays that might have just been in a lag. So it'll be a very fair sale and it's great to partner with Gavel House, as I said earlier, who are tried and tested. It's not like it's going to be a first op. They've been, at, been there, they've done it, and uh, they're very successful at what they've done. And I must say they've been a great help. So to Andrew Seabrook and his staff and to Hayley, a uh, big thank you to them as well. And I guess the sooner you, you get your buyer's card and you get registered, the better. You don't want to be doing it last minute. Everyone's got the opportunity to get going with that now. Yeah, absolutely. And that's why we'll be calling most of the guys that have successfully purchased at the Claverflay Farm sale before. Michaela will be giving them a ring and we'll be chatting to them and seeing if we can help in getting them registered. And uh, then, as I said, they'll be sent their username and their passwords and they'll be able to get online. And uh, yeah, as you said as well, catalogue certainly one of the strongest we've had in terms of the pages and uh, I think it's going to be fun. Lots of the trainers I've spoken to have been out to the farms, they've seen the horses in the flesh and they're, they're very excited about what they've seen but I've also seen an example of the Gavel House website and there's a lot on offer on that uh, website. You get a picture of the horse, obviously you get a lot of information and, and some veterinary notes as well. Absolutely, you can see everything there and uh, we'll obviously have vets on course as well on, on the farm so they'll be able to, uh, if you buy and you want to have a vet pre-check them, you'll have somebody from Cornerstone and you'll have Bacon McVeigh there uh, so too for scoping so transporters will be there so as you've knocked down if once the sale's gone and your horse has gone through the ring and you've bought it be able to put it straight on the float and take it to the stable that you choose and like I said the vet will be there as well so anything pre-vetting if you need to have done and scoping after the sale they all be available for them on that Sunday. Some great opportunities in this catalogue, some horses that maybe missed the, the sales at the beginning of the year and, and some really, really nice pedigrees. I'm delighted with the catalogue. It uh, certainly is, one of, like I said, one of the strongest. And uh, it's always great because this year we've got the race, obviously, from last year's graduate that's been postponed a few months. And we've got a nice feel that that lines up on the 16th of 
uh, June out at Kenilworth. I think there's a, a foolish field there and some nice types as well and 225,000 Rand in prize money for last year's race and we're hoping to be able to raise 225,000 Rand for the 2021 race. Now, great to say as well that a big thank you to Gary Linton and his crew at GG Gaming. They've come to the party and they're going to sponsor the farm sale race for 2021. So it'll be the Cloudflare farm sale race in partnership with GG Gaming. We're looking to get another big stake there. We're guaranteeing 150,000 Rand because we're just not sure if the buyers will tick the boxes uh, in this economy right now, but I'm sure they will. Um, and if they all do, if everybody who partakes and takes the horse there, then we'll have a very similar stake again for next year as well. So great to have a sales race attached to it. And that race will be run for last year's sale on the 16th of June. We're looking forward to that. In fact, I've got a little share in one as well, so it's quite exciting. Well, that's an added huge incentive now, knowing there's another race next year it really is a, a huge incentive. And of course, we're all going to miss being out at Club of Flair because it's such a, a great party mm -hmm. and, a, and a wonderful time. But also, it gives everyone an opportunity to be able to have a bed from your home in, on your couch with a glass of wine, people that maybe wouldn't have made the farm sale. And so it do, does open up other opportunities. It does indeed. And I think we're very grateful that racing has started again because uh, would have been quite uh, a dull atmosphere, I think, if there had been no racing. We've seen some tremendous races. We've seen feature races in KZN, the drill hall. We've really got the Durban season coming ahead in full steam. So I think that's really just lit up the enthusiasm a little bit from everybody. So I think, yeah, sitting at home with a nice glass of red wine, watching it on a, a smart TV or on your computer and uh, having a dip, because I do believe that it will be a great value sale. I think the market, if you ever wanted to have a horse, and a reminder that we're still going to be able to export horses at some point. So you flick a nice colt and you've only paid 10, 15 grand for him. There are going to be markets available to sell these horses overseas. And to me, that's still a very exciting prospect. And we say it over and over again, some really good top horses have come out of this sale. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the obvious ones are Edict of Nantes. He's already in Hong Kong, captain of all. He's standing at stud. So those are the two top ones. But there's been a whole host of other horses as well that have come off that farm sale. Barrick Street, another stakes horse that's come through. He's now plying his trade in Mauritius as well. And um, he was a great pinnock, actually. I think he was sold at the farm sale for 100 grand, went through ready to run. I think they got 450,000. So again, for speculators, I think it's a great opportunity. You might get these horses now this uh, coming weekend at a great, great value price. And then maybe the economy and the racing jurisdictions have all picked up strongly enough by November for a ready to run sale. And you can say, you know what, paid 15 grand, I'm going to sell this now and get 200,000 rand. So a Pinocchio's Marcus, if you're brave and take the chance, you might well come out um, feeling pretty well rewarded. Well, a lot of hard work's gone into it, but it is a catalogue full of opportunities and we wish you all the best this week in selling. We're looking forward to it. And yeah, if, everybody, uh, if anybody needs any other information, there's a great Gavel House tutorial available that shows you how to go on the site and really easy to access. And they have made that uh, platform very, very easy for people that might think that they're not computer literate. So yeah, we're looking forward to it and um, something new. And, uh, let's see how it goes. But yeah, looking forward to it and uh, certainly hope that the guys participate and really buy a nice horse. Yeah, exciting week ahead. Thanks very much, Grant. Great, thank you for the opportunity. We're really looking forward to this week. Uh, we've got the Clava Flay race day, obviously, on the Tuesday. We've got uh, the, the farm sale online. It's going to be really exciting. You've still got an opportunity if you want to get out there and have a look at a few horses. And of course, they will be on the website and uh, plenty of information there. So look forward to a great week ahead and get your bids on.
Edict of Nuns is in front, the yellow cap. He's going on strongly. Nothing's got a chance then now. Edict of Nuns drawing away in the closing stages. Goes away to win it comfortably. Edict of Nuns is going great gun from El Sahem. Horizon's back third. Edict of Nuns from El Sahem. Edict of Nuns takes it to another level. Captain of all going on to win it. And Captain of all has got it won. Second place will go to Legend Play in Carry On Alice. Captain of all that goes on. And it's Captain of all from Gulf Storm, the last hundred. But Captain of all has won it. The Breeding to Win team caught up with a couple of trainers this past week to find out their views about the online sale and to discuss the quality of this year's catalogue. Eric, the Clavafle farm sale is coming up. It's online. It's in conjunction with Gavel House. It's a new thing for our country to be taking on. Should be quite exciting. Yes. Um it's interesting, you know. Yes, I think it's a lot more open. We're gonna we're gonna find ways to work the system and that, but it shouldn't be too difficult. Uh, I was at the farms on Friday, and uh, I saw some nice horses at Club of Lay. I saw some nice horses at Main Johnson Island. So uh, it's interesting, and the prices to start off are encouraging. So during this time, I think it's a big plus. Yeah, I think it's an interesting way to go. It's probably a way forward. We're probably going to have a lot of sales like this. But it is good news that uh, as the lockdown has, has gone down a little bit, we've been able to get out and see the horses. It would have been a bit difficult otherwise. Yes, at the moment you can't see me smiling, but uh, I am. And uh, it's lovely to be back and it's lovely to get out there. And uh, just, to, just to race today is, uh, is lovely. Fantastic. There's some really nice pedigrees in the catalogue, though. Looks to be some nice horses. And obviously nice horses have come out of the sale before. Yes, no, there are some very nice horses there. I mean, in every every catalogue you're going to find good and bad and that, but I must say there looks like there's very good value for money. And Gavel House have been doing this for some time. They know what they're doing. So to be coupled with them, great combination and, and should all go to plan. Yeah, I'm sure it will go to plan. Uh, we'll see how the buyers go and uh, who buys what and that. But uh, yeah, I'm interested. I must be honest, I was really pleasantly surprised. Um, I, I saw Main Chance, I saw Highlands, and I saw uh, Claverflay. And I think out of seeing maybe 80 horses, um, there might have been three that I would have said, look, you, you got to be, you know, watch the legs. But other than that, there were some superb uh, specimens. Um, I think lava flays are, are really straight out of the paddock. I saw a video of them running around in the paddock and playing in the mist and in, in the dam. And it's unbelievable. But, but I tell you what, if you look through that, they are absolutely outstanding. You know, really nice, tough horses, well grown. And, and as I said, I couldn't believe how many of them had, you know, just great legs. So um, I think there's a lot for everybody to have and even those that can't get to see them um, you're welcome to give me a call or, and there's so many agents that are, are, are looking at the horses so you know phone up the guys have a look I think that put in a bid you never know how lucky you're gonna get um, and there's some beautifully bred horses there there's a half sister to a group one uh, uh, winner so I, I, there's lots for everybody and um, you know a lot of freshman sires that, that really looked the pot could grass really look like they're gonna run um, unfortunately he hasn't set the tracks light yet but it's still early days so don't write him off there a lot of nice coup de gras there and as I said give me the green lights and um, main chances horses were prepped with the national yearlings I think or, or just about they look uh, probably uh, uh, just as good and uh, there's some damn nice horses and Highlands had some super super horses well bred you know, well grown good legged so I was very very I was pleasantly surprised how, how nice they were and you'll be able to sit at home on your couch with a nice glass of wine to, doing the buying Maybe two glasses, just give you a bit of courage. But um, I've actually uh, um, tried my hand at uh, Summer Hill. Um, I don't think it was, uh, you know, it was the first one ever, and it wasn't as well organised. You weren't quite sure if you it was your bid or not, and uh, we put a bid on four, and um, I only uh, I got two, which I was grateful for, and really, really inexpensive. And um, so I, I was really chuffed with that. I used Jane Gray to to look at oh, Jane Thomas to look at the horses. And uh, I was very happy with what she bought up once I've seen the videos. So it can be done. So it's, it's a new uh, norm, I think. And we've got to go ahead and, and, and support this. Uh, and uh, it's important that we get yearlings. Uh, otherwise, we're in trouble for next season. 
Yeah, I think it's a great idea and of course Gavel House well known, so I think it's a great combination. Yeah, absolutely, and it's nice to see that uh, um, the TBA have uh, started their, their online uh, uh, look at it because maybe the, the, the national sales might be in the same position. So, um, yeah, very exciting. I think Gavel House is doing a fantastic job, which is nice, is but um, the horse walks in, uh, well, the horse goes off at one o'clock, let's say lot one, and by three minutes past uh, uh, one, you'll know whether or not you've got the horse or not. So it gives you an opportunity to see your underbid and, and put in another bid, which is fantastic. It's going to be quite exciting, isn't it, Brett? The Claverflay farm sales online with Gavel House and uh, looks to be a very strong catalogue. And of course, Edict Finance came from this sale, so you must be quite fond of the sale. Yeah, um, Fee, we know we've had success off the sale. Um, Edict of Nance obviously being the highlight uh, as a group, a dual group one winner. Um, it's always been a, a very good sale to me. Um, I've always enjoyed going out there. This year is going to be very different. Uh, bidding online is going to be something unique to us. But um, I think it's a great um, concept from, from Cloverfly and Gavel House to, you know, in these trying times. Um, and I'm sure they'll still get their support. Yeah, it's a great effort. Uh, John Costas put a lot of effort into this sale and it could be just be the way forward now with sales. So it's something we possibly need to get used to. Yeah, look, um, you know, Australia have already, uh, I think they've had a few already and uh, seems to have gone well. So I do think it's, it's something that will definitely hold its place in the future. But um, yeah, I just wish them all luck and um, hopefully we'll get a few successful bids ourselves online. Well, thankfully, um, it opened up a little bit so trainers could get out to some of the farms and have a look as well. But it certainly looks to be a good catalogue. And I know that they're trying their best to put everything uh, possible on the um, website. So you've got all the information. Yeah, I know a lot of work's gone into taking uh, videos and, uh, and, and pictures of the horses. So that'll help. And I'm sure a few trainers have uh, you know, organized a few permits to go out and see the horses themselves. So, uh, yeah, it'll be a, a, an interesting sale. Lucinda Woodruff's had some luck at the farm sale in the past with Destruction Boy and Piracy. Will you be taking interest again on the online sale? Yeah, I'll definitely be having a squiz through the catalogue. Um, there's some always some nice, uh, reasonable horses you can pick up there, and we've had a little bit luck of luck in the past. So. It does look to be a very good catalogue uh, once again and some nice horses have come off this sale and it's all going to be very interesting isn't it the new sort of online it's a very new concept for us but it looks very very well organised you get lots of information on the website and you can go and see the horses if you get a chance as well. Yeah I think um, moving forward the world's changed you know we've got to have these new innovative ideas with in terms of selling and um, online bidding and that. Um, there's been a lot of success in Australia with it earlier on in the year um, I don't see why it shouldn't work yeah, so it'll be very interesting to see how it all takes off. But yeah, it, it also makes a buyer's life a hell of a lot easier, not having to travel through. And um, yeah, so let's have a see how, how it goes. Yeah, look, I think it's a lot of guys are doing it around the world, and I think it's a good initiative. And uh, so well done to Cloverflow for you know keep getting a step ahead. But um, I think it's a good initiative and uh, it's never easy buying horse, anything online for me. And, uh, but we're going to take, I think a lot of people are going to take a drive out to the farm and have a look at the horses. And um, I don't think it's going to make any difference in the support of the sale. And uh, most certainly we will be there. Yeah, that's right. You've got the opportunity to go and look at them. There's plenty of info on the website um, and it could be quite nice. It could be exciting actually for buyers to be able to buy at home and not have to travel out there. Yeah, I, th I think it's a sale that you don't want to miss. It's, it's, throw, you know, it's thrown a lot of champions out of the sale. So um, it's really, you know, it's a sale that we always look at. And Cloverflay are great breeders and they're always capable of producing top Group 1 horses. So most certainly we've looked through the catalogue already and uh, we'll be there. It's great that racing's back on track and a lot of people have pulled together and a lot of new sponsors. It's what we really need and it's, it's just so exciting to be racing. And I think we're all appreciating it more than ever. Yes, uh, a special yeah, thank you to Cloverflay. You know, they're, they're tremendous every year. They, it's a pity we, they, their day was growing so nicely with the grooms and the soccer and hopefully it'll, it'll resume again next year. But um, they do a lot for the industry, Cloverflay, and uh, especially on this day. Uh, and and taking an additional race on top of it. So really, thank you. And um, I know everyone in the Western Cape is very ap appreciative to them. Well, of course, we're appreciative to Snaith Racing for, for sponsoring as well. It's, uh, it's, it's great. It's what we need. And uh, it's just so nice to be racing. I'm really appreciating what we've missed. Well, you know, it wasn't really Snaith Racing. It was Justin. So he put the money in. So I must say thank you to him. Um, you know, he just thought it was a good initiative and he wanted to be a part of it. So um, put his money where his mouth is, as I say. And um, thanks to him. Well, certainly we don't need to be um, any more doom and gloom. Things are looking good, and I think we've got a, a nice uh, season ahead. Yes, you know, I think everyone's um, look, really looking forward to the Cape summer season, 
and hopefully there's going to be a lot of changes before then and uh, it's going to be a lot more exciting than it has been in the last couple of years so we're really looking forward to it. Eight horses represent Main Chance Farms and Justin for Mark tells us more about their draft. Main Chance have got eight selling on the Clava Flay online sale and it's great to have Justin for Mark with me today to chat about the pedigrees and the looks of those eight going to the sale. Lovely to chat to you today, Justin. And firstly, before we take a look at the pedigrees, it's a great, uh, it's going to be a great sale, isn't it, in conjunction with Gavel House, and it seems to be very, very well organised. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, everyone will be waiting with bated breath for all the media and images of all the lots going on the sale, which goes up obviously in the beginning of next week, after the weekend, and uh, the sale goes live, so it's going to be fun and games. I believe there's been a lot of interest and had many trainers and owners from upcountry try and contact me about going to look at horses and that type of thing. So I think uh, judging by the vast array uh, and combination of pedigrees of Colts and Phillies, I think it will be a decent sale. Yeah, we were lucky that the lockdown eased a little bit so the trainers could get out and see the horses beforehand. But I've seen a few examples of the website and you get quite a lot of information there as well. Yeah, Gavel House, as we touched on before, um, you know, they've been doing this for many years and uh, well versed in the Australasian market. So I think it will go off pretty well and um, yeah it's it's good fun online sale something different and uh, I think the sale is going to be a success for the buyers and obviously hopefully for the sellers it is a difficult market as we know but I think there is a, a, a fair spread of types of horses at the sale for everyone. Yeah and as we spoke about on a show earlier this month you know it's new to most people but it's something you've experienced before and, and it can work very well. Yeah it can there's already been a couple here in South Africa um, obviously that uh, equine online sales from BSA has just um, just finished and uh, there was quite a bit of movement a lot of horses sold some not sold which is to be expected but I think um, they're getting better with with each online sale and obviously as we've touched on before with Clara Flay teaming up with all the other vendors that are represented with an operation like Gavel House, it, it'll go off without a hitch. Yeah, it does seem to be very, very well put together and a lovely catalogue on the whole, some smashing pedigrees. Yes, absolutely. There's a, a vast array. Um, some that will come later, some will come early and colts and fillies as well. So I think speculators looking for ready to run horses and then uh, trainers looking to buy horses for cheaper prices to put in training as well, a good, a good spread. Yeah, it's got a good uh, strike rate, the Club of Lay Farm sale. But let's just run through main chances lots because uh, you look to have a nice draft. Let's start with lot 17, a bay colt, buy twice over out of Sheena. Yeah, look, obviously great pedigree. I mean, uh, Sheena being the full sister to Silvano, this being a brother to Horizon and Santa Clara. It's a, it's a family that really works in South Africa, uh, really done well. And obviously twice over hasn't done too badly himself. So I think once again, we, we're quite lucky with this little draft we've put together for the sale, uh, mainly Colts, which always helps you for resale purposes. And I think he's a Colt that um, a lot of pin hooking type of buyers will be looking to possibly put on the ready to run at the end of the year. He's a smart horse and he's got the pedigree to match. Yeah, lovely breeding. Lot 38 uh, is a Bay Colt by Verson Gestrick, out of Wooden Doll. Yeah, he's a brother to um, a good filly of Heinrich Rix's that runs in Johannesburg with Stereo Walk. And uh, Verson Gestrick's once again, another horse who is very commercial at the moment. And his colts do tend to run. You know, he's a horse who can throw you uh, horses that sometimes are, look a bit immature and light at the sales, but they just seem to, to really flourish into two-year-olds and they run in all shapes and sizes. So a nice colt and um, it's worked, the mating's already worked with a sister of Wisteria Walk. So I think this colt will be attracting quite a few buyers. Yeah, you've got some nice breeding amongst your bunch. I must say, Lot 98 is a bay colt by Flower Alley out of uh, Lumiere. Yeah, stakes winning Giants Causeway Mare. I don't think there's too many of those in South Africa. And uh, Flower Alley's a stallion is doing quite nicely. Um, obviously, he's only really got three year olds, but he had a whole bunch of horses running in the Oaks and the Derby last weekend. And I think he actually had two of his fillies full the first four in the Oaks, which is, which is something. And of course, had a good two year old of the Basses that uh, just got pipped in a feature race for fillies the other day in Cape Town. So he's having a lot of horses do really, really well. And um, they do come nicely over a bit of a trip later as three year olds. So nice classic type of stallion. And with a stakes winning Giants Causeway mare, obviously a colt who's definitely going to have some attention. Yeah, nice lookers too as well, the Flower Alleys. Lot 109 is a bay colt uh, by Captain of All out of La Callisto. 
strong German female line that we've had at the farm uh, for a while. There's a few generations of it. And uh, Captain of All, you know, he's got to be up there with one of the success sire stories of the last couple of years. Really just a workmanlike trainers type of sire, his progeny just run. And uh, he's done really well. And I think he, he probably got a lot higher quality group of mares in, his, uh, in the last covering season. So I think the Captain of All progeny are probably going to get better and better as the years go on. Yeah, look, 113 is a filly, a bay filly. She's by Wiley Hall out of Lady Seymour. This uh, family is quite a quick main chance family. Obviously, um, the female line throws a lot of really good sprinters. Wiley Hall is not averse to getting a, a quick juvenile either. We've seen that with Twilight Moon, who was sold to Hong Kong. And um, this filly is, is a good mover, quite a, quite a quick horse. I think a lot of the female line in this filly, not a filly you're going to have to wait too long for. Lot 117, a bay colt, another verse in Getrix, out of Masked Lady. Another verse in Getrix, as we said earlier, commercial type of horse. And obviously the mare is a Group 1 performer, having placed in Group 1 races as a two-year-old. She came really, really early. So I think, um, you know, this type of colt, once again, is a no-brainer type of buy at a good price for, um, for a trainer or owner, a speculator as well. Verse and Getrix is a very commercial horse and he's not going to lose commercial values the closer to the end of the year that we get. And, you know, he's right up there in the three-year-old size log this year. And he's battling it out with Gimme the Green Light and Silvano at the top of the log. So a nice colt with a good, uh, from a good mare and a very fashionable sire. Yeah, masked lady, very fitting in these times. Um, lot 129, Chestnut Philly by Futura at a Painted Leaf. And Futura really is throwing some good lookers. He is, and he's had some winners now, which is really good. Um, I was speaking to someone the other day about him because we've bought quite a few and uh, purchased a share or two on behalf of clients because he's a horse who, um, of the two-year-olds we're involved with, he's got some really smart two-year-olds of ours and, you know, it looked like he hadn't really uh, fired early, which uh, is a bit of a misconception because obviously we haven't been racing for a few months. And uh, for a horse like him to have a couple of winners on the board already is pretty good. And uh, the mare is a full sister to, to Punta Rinas, who was a very good horse. And uh, as you can see, a lot of Silvano mares in our draft here. A lot of his daughters now becoming brood mares of a couple of horses. And this is a filly, Barfatura, who has uh, got a nice, fashionable pedigree as well. Yeah, absolutely. Lot 132 is a bay colt by Kiwari out of Penny Serenade. Yeah, another Silvano mare. Uh, she was a, pr a pretty good race filly. She was up in uh, Johannesburg with the Azis and she won four or five races. And uh, the Karari Silvano crosses producing stakes winners at a percentage of 20% to runners, which is very good. Uh, the likes of Wonder Wall uh, was bred on that cross. And um, Cosmic Light as well, who's a mare that we've now got at the farm. And uh, once again, Curaris and Vercingetrix, you know, those type of horses, they always sell well at the sales. So people that are speculating for the end of the year, I think they'll be looking at a colt like this uh, to possibly put on the ready to run. Well, some lovely bred individuals, I must say. And you happy with them all in looks and confirmation as well? Yeah, they all look good. I know um, Tim Buitzma, our stud manager, has done a good job preparing these horses and the national horses. And he's a, um, obviously, it's uh, winter time now and horses are looking quite fluffy and they haven't really been prepared for the sales. But I think that'll be a common theme amongst all the vendors here. We'll see the videos and the pictures of everyone's drafts and there'll be a lot woollier yearlings than we're used to seeing. But um, obviously everyone will account for that. So they, they are looking a bit wintry, some of them, and not really prepared for a boutique sale. But for farm sale standards, uh, they're in good shape. Yeah, we've got plenty of good horsemen out there. They'll be making sure everything's in the right place. That's the main thing. But it's really exciting. It's all happening this week. Um, and everybody must just get out there if they've got the last chance to go and look at horses. And then, of course, we're all going to have to be online and ready to bid. Yeah, absolutely. I know, obviously, it's a small industry. And um, I'm sure people up north will be contacting various people that they used to buy horses. And um, I know uh, Jean Malherbe is going out there with Brett Crawford tomorrow. I'm going on Monday, uh, just before the sale goes live. Uh, Glenn Cotson and uh, a vast array of people have been. Uh, so I think, and a lot of stud managers as well. So anyone up north who needs information on horses, there's a whole bunch of people to contact, can get opinions on. And um, I, think, I think there'll be some bargains going and hopefully some happy sellers afterwards. Yeah, some of the trainers that I've already chatted to, they've been out to some of the farms and they're quite impressed with what they've seen so far. Yeah, I spoke to Glenn. He phoned me when he went uh, in the afternoon after he got back and he was quite impressed with, with, with the draft, especially from Claver Flay. 
Uh, obviously, there's a couple of horses that um, weren't sold at book one, which are on the sale. So you've got that, that quality of pedigree to get onto that sale that are available here that didn't meet reserves and that type of thing. So, and I think a lot of the vendors are on the same boat. And uh, a lot of horses who probably in a normal year would have waited for ready to run sales or even the two year old sale in Johannesburg. But because we're already quite late on in the breeding year, uh, a lot of vendors needing to sell horses and start getting some some cash flow through through the businesses. So there's some horses available here that I think wouldn't be on regional sales in years gone by, which is uh, another benefit for the buyer. Yeah, I think it's a catalogue with great opportunities and let's just hope it all goes well. And on another note, you're enjoying having some racing to watch on the television again. Yeah, it's great. I was telling you off air and we're getting the football back next week, which is for me even better than racing. But um, yeah, it's good, obviously, a lot of people taking renewed interest in international racing from England and Hong Kong and that type of thing. But just to have the South African racing back is great. Obviously, it's a bit difficult with with stake money where it is, but I think that's a temporary solution. And um, just to have everyone back back in the game, back working, back racing is a massive blessing. Yeah, getting back on track slowly but surely. But uh, thanks for taking the time to chat to us. Best of luck at the sale this week. Thank you very much. Lovely to chat to Justin Vimart once again on the show about the Clava Flay farm sale which is going online this week. Really nice catalogue, some lovely horses and of course main chance have got eight with lovely pedigrees as well. Oscar Folks has 11 horses in total that will be sold under the Normandy Studs banner. Their draft consists of progeny from Twice Over, Pomodora, Jackson, Coup de Gras and Captain of All. The Clava Flay farm sale is coming up this week in conjunction with Gavel House. It's going to be an exciting online sale and I must say I'm really looking forward to it. And with me is Oscar Folks from Normandy Stud to have a little chat about his draft which looks pretty exciting going forward. Oscar, thank you for taking time to chat to us today. Thanks, Fee. Firstly, it's going to be an interesting sale, isn't it? The first online sale for us here in South Africa and it seems to be well organised. We've got all the information on the website uh, about the horses and well advertised, lovely catalogue and people can get out there and see the horses. Yeah, they can. Um, I think that the you know, online auctions are really interesting. I've just been part of an a auction of some bicycles for a charity I'm involved in and that went really well. Um, so, and look, I mean, I've been a digital creature for a long time, so anything online, I don't need any conversion to. Yeah, I think it's going to be exciting. As I said, it seems to be well organised. Everyone's getting geared up for it. And in some ways, you can, you can make your bids in the beauty of your own home. Yes, and, and what I'm hoping is that there are people that are going to participate in the auction that wouldn't otherwise have been bidding. Um, you know, sitting at home and, well, nothing on TV, let's see what's happening in the auction, and before you know it, you've bought a horse for 20,000 Rand or whatever it is. So, you know, I think that it can extend the reach beyond what it normally would have been. Um, because it's not, I mean, it's not a sale that generally produces horses that sell for hundreds of thousands of millions, so it's accessible to many people. And as enjoyable as the farm sale is, it's a, it's a lovely event. Um, you know, some people can't always get the, get out to Club of Flay to go to the sale, so you'll have that opportunity now to, to have a go. Yeah. Look, I do miss the party afterwards, and, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of fun and games that happen there. But anyway, we'll just have that another time. Well, let's just run through your draft, because you yeah. need to have a nice bunch going. And we'll start with um, Lot 12, a Bay Colt by Jackson out of Seagrass. OK, so he is a three-parts brother to Dukak. He's the first foal of a um, young mare, and uh, he's a November foal. Um, he's picked backward, and he's only going to get better and better and better. So for someone who's sharp, I think that he's going to be a good buy. Yeah, something to look forward to. And they're yeah. nice looking sorts, the Jacksons. Yes. Lot 47's Chestnut Colt by Coup de Gras out of Ashram. OK, so Ashram is a filly that um, um, we'd raced in partnership with Peter Dubai, trained by Glenn Cotson. She did herself an injury to a fetlock joint before she even raced. And she's got a whole bunch of metal in a fetlock joint. She was such a gutsy filly. And um, so we thought she's worth giving a chance to. He's got a very interesting pedigree in red to Stormcat and to Weekend Surprise. And for the Clara Flair farm sale races for, for two year olds, I think it'd be perfect for that. Yeah, absolutely. Lot 57 is a bay filly by twice over out of Carla's Wisdom. OK, so Carla's Wisdom is a mare that we bought because she was inbred two by three to Blush and Groom. She got 100% winners from foals, including Savvy, who was fourth in the nursery. And um, so she's one of those mares that's, I wouldn't if you call her a sleeper, but she's, she's not highly fashionable, but she just produces the goods and this is a nice filly. And Lot 58 is another um, twice over, a colt, a bay colt out of Carmina. 
that guy, if he does not win races, I, I don't know. I mean, he's just, he's got something about him. He's scopy, he's athletic, he's a, a horse for 2,000 metres plus. Yeah, exciting. A lot, one, two, four, a bay filly, captain of all, out of next generation. So she's bred on the same cross as Cap All Right, uh, Cap on a, on a, by son of Captain Arlott of a centenary mayor, family of Elenita, you know, it could be anything. Yeah, you've got a nice mix, mix of stallions here. Lot one, two, six, the chestnut filly by Count de Bois out of Noble World. Um, okay, Noble World is the family of Golden Loom who won 22 races. And Count de Bois, I think, just is such good value for money. Um, he's a very, very underrated stallion. And lot one, three, one, a bay colt, uh, another coup de gras out of Pelea. Um, I'd put him in the same category as that twice over lot 58. Um, he's scopy, he's classic, he's athletic. Um, he actually takes off to Silvano, his brood messiah. Um, I, I think it's a lovely, lovely colt. Lot 43 is a bay colt uh, by Count Dubois out of Am Hooge, a, a, a British mare. I guess so. I mean, she's by um, Green Desert. Um, she's out of a 1,000 guineas winner. So amazing pedigree, and he could all be a horse that, that shows as a two year old. And not 68 Chestnut Colt by Twice Over out of Downs with Sally. Downs with Sally's already bred two nice horses. Um, she's Australian bred. And um, so it's a kind of pedigree that could have been at nationals or somewhere else, but you know, he's ended up on the farm cell. Um, he's also also going to get better and better with age. And lot 125 is a Pomodora out of Night on the Hill. He is an absolute peach of a colt. He's, he's lovely. He's a beautiful head, strong, well-made. You would never, ever think he's a first foal. Um, and it's, you know, the fam of, family of Capel Wright and, and Mother Russia and Bravura and Winter Solstice and, yeah. Oh, lovely. And I did miss one out. Lot 69's a bay filly by Count Dubois out of Day to Day. So she's a big, strong filly. And, um, I mean, back in the day, they have said she's, you know, built like a brick shit house. I mean, she's... She's solid. Um, and she's by counterpoint. is good value, I think. Mm. Well, it's going to be exciting. A lot of people have already been out to see them, I assume. And there's just a couple of days left now before we sort of start thinking about going online and bidding. So it's going to be lots of fun next week. Yes, definitely. Looking forward to it. I hope you've had a lot of interest out at the farm because we have got to the level in lockdown where we can travel with permits. And I hope lots of people have been out to have a look. Um, yeah, we haven't had any yet, but, um, you know, Hopefully the horses week. are there and please come and look at them. Yeah, and on the website, I must say, is offering lots of information on every horse. You, you get to see quite a lot. It's very well set up, I think. You know, you've got all the information you need in front of you. Yeah. So, I mean, we've put a lot of effort into the photography, the videos. Um, Troy Finch has done an amazing job. And um, so, you know, even though you might not get to the farm to see the horses, We've done all we can to create a virtual experience. That's it. You can see as much as you can. And I think it seems to be the way forward now, doesn't it? Uh, we're going to be getting more and more videos of horses and, and information for people to see. Look, the thing is that something like the Ready to Run sale, those Gallup videos often are what sell horses. So, you know, it's, that's a sale that could happen virtually. There's no reason for people to be there physically. Mm. I think yearling sales are a bit more tricky, but. Um, ready to run definitely, you know, that could happen online easily. Mm. Well, I think um, John Costa and all, all the team at Clover Fair have done a fantastic job with Gavel House, really putting it together well. And uh, I think it's going to be a lot, lot of fun and very interesting. Yes, that's for sure. Let's just hope it goes well and hope you sell well. Cool. Um, and then have a good sale. Thank you very much, Oscar. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. Lovely to be here at Oscar's house this morning to have a chat to him about the sale. It's going to be really exciting next week. You must get online. You must take a look at these horses and, and get out to the farms if you can. There's still time to go and have a look at a few horses before you get your bids in. Russ Fuller tells us what we can expect from Ridgemont Highland Stud, who also have 11 horses on the sale. Ridgemont Highlands have 12 horses represented on the Claverflay farm sale this week. Some exciting sires consisting of four Jacksons, two Futuras, one twice over, a Retief and four Coup de Gras. All good looking individuals with a good walk and purpose. Lot 9 is a lovely twice over bay colt out of Sassy Cell who's by High Chaparral. Lot 41 is a bay filly by Rafif. She's out of a horse chestnut mare, African Lily.
48 is a Jackson filly out of a Varmare Baltier. Lot 114 is a chestnut filly by Futura out of a La Poppet who is by Crimson Waves. It's great to see other farms joining Clava Flay for the online farm sale and we wish everyone a successful week ahead. We look forward to seeing how the online sale works and you for South Africa and uh, certainly looking forward to it over the next couple of days. Well that's a wrap for this edition of Breeding to Win from myself Julie Alexander and the rest of the Breeding to Win team. Good night.